благословляется, освещается оружие сиекра, принимает вот здесь чистыми. Благодати Пресвятого Духа во имя Отца и Сына. This week, after a successful counterattack by Ukrainian forces in northeast Ukraine, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill, urged Russians to pray for President Putin as well as for all military leaders and those in power, so that the Lord would provide them with wisdom and strength. Commenting on this war, Professor Kirill Havarun of University College Stockholm stated to Washington Post that any war has to have guns and ideas. In this war, the Kremlin has provided the guns, and I believe the Church is providing the ideas. Therefore, to understand some of such ideas, and since I'm Ukrainian that speaks Russian, I decided to make a selection of statements of representatives of the Russian Orthodox Church so that you can understand how some of them justify Russia's war aggression against Ukraine. There will be even a poem by Orthodox priest dedicated to Putin and where he compares Putin with Moses. Plus, at the end, there will be a reaction to the war by the head of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. So please watch until the end. All these people are enemies of both Russia and Ukraine. They are against our unity, against our spiritual heritage which means, regardless of whether they call themselves believers or non-believers, they are, of course, against the will of God, which is always directed towards peace, brotherhood and love. Since you are the head of National Guard of the Russian Federation, I would like this image to be in the ranks of the National Guard. Let this image inspire young soldiers who embark on the path of defending the fatherland. Your Holiness, thank you for this gift. I want to say that Russian troops are fulfilling all the assigned tasks during this military operation, and I want to say that yes, not everything is going as fast as we would like, but this is only because the Nazis are hiding behind the backs of civilians, behind the backs of women, children and elderly people. They arrange firing positions in kindergarten, school, residential buildings. But we are moving towards the intended goals step by step, and victory will be ours. And this icon will protect the Russian army and will advance our victory. Thank you again for this. Many people have already died in order for the world to live according to God's plan, but not satanic plan. They have already built a large satanic village in which there is one boss with stars and stripes, meaning the US, who teaches everyone to live satanic lifestyle. And there is only one country in the world that resists them, this is Mother Russia. And the Russian soldier suffers for everything, as always, is simple Russian soldiers take the rap for everything in history. Some steal, others commit adultery, and then all of the sudden everything boom and turn upside down. And the Russian soldier takes the rap for everything. We take pinpoint blows on objects of military structure, on NATO headquarters, that is coordinating this system of enslavement of Slavic people. Ukrofascists are snakes fed by Europe. They have been teaching their children the lesson kill the Russian in yourself. These Ukra Nazis are sitting in those empty, dilapidated buildings of kindergartens and schools. They are drug addicts, as Vladimir Putin called them, knowing that they have been on heavy drugs. The next day, they took bodies from the morgues and put them around the administration building in Kharkiv, where this general staff met, and make fake news. For eight years, there have been attempts to destroy what exists in the Donbass. But on the Donbass, there is a rejection fundamental rejection of the so-called values which today is offered by those who claim to rule the world.
Today there is such a test for the loyalty to these rulers of the world. This kind of test or pass to that happy world, the world of excessive consumption, the world of apparent freedom. Do you know what kind of test is this? This is a very simple test, and at the same time, it's awful test. It is a gay parade. These requirements for many to hold a gay parade are a test of loyalty to that powerful world. And we know that if people of countries reject these demands, they do not enter into that world, they become strangers. Offer's poem to Vladimir Putin. We are with our president together. It is a blessing to live with him in a Russian way, to be with Christ in mind and honor and faithfully love Russia. God gave him knightly strength and a heroic shield and sword. For the fact that he loves Russia and knows how to save it. Shame to the enemies that lead to sin. We won in 1945. It's time to strike the enemies again. Putin leads us like Moses did. He is a guardian of the heart and spirit of Christ. God is strong in him. He is a great advisor. The sword and shield were given to the president. And today, with all their might, the enemies of both the Russian and Ukrainian people from the outside are trying to convince us that we are not brothers, that we are enemies and we must fight each other. We are now going for a conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Well, let's think about what can really divide us. We are practically one people. So what can divide us? But the enemy of all humankind, meaning Satan, through specific people, through specific associations of people, causing lies between our nations. And on the basis of this lie, a conflict evolves. And the state has institutions that by law have the right to use force. It can force its citizens to obey if they violate laws, or it can also force other countries to obey if the state considers them as a threat. During a war you cannot make agreements with traitors. When everything is so serious, any little dog barking on the elephant is considered a traitor. Before I share the comment from the head of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, I must explain you that in Ukraine there are two major Orthodox Churches. The most powerful is the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which is still under the Moscow Patriarchate. And there is the Orthodox Church of Ukraine that is recognized by Constantinople, but not by Moscow. After the aggression in February of 2022, many parishes refused to obey the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and transfer away from Moscow to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. Indeed, over 400 parishes has transferred since February. In a separate video, I'll provide more details on that. But now, let's see the comment from the head of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, Metropolitan of Kyiv and All Ukraine Epiphanius. We have been talking about this since 2014, that there should be a single local Orthodox Church in Ukraine. If we have a single recognized independent of Moscow Patriarchate Church, this will become the spiritual basis on which the independent Ukrainian state will fully develop. It's an axiom. Without this foundation, we will not create a united, strong Ukrainian state. But we were not heard, we were not understood, they consider us brotherly peoples, and they assured us that our so-called older brother would never attack Ukraine. 
After the victory, there will be one unified church. All Orthodox people will unite. I do not believe that any of the Orthodox Ukrainians, after such terror and practically genocide of the Ukrainian people that we are witnessing today, will visit parishes of the Russian Orthodox Church.